Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace here, and today I am in GameCraft again, uh, showing you more examples of logic. Uh, last time I showed some basic logic gates, some doors, repeater. Today I've got an XNOR gate, I've got a door lock, a memory set and reset, and I know this doesn't look like a tank, but it theoretically has tank steering. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. But in this video, I'll show you how it should work and what the problem is. All right, let's get to it. So last time I showed the uh, AND, OR, XOR, and NOR gates, uh, possibilities for those. Uh, today I've got an XNOR gate figured out. So the way the XNOR works is if both are off, then this is true, or both are on, this is true. Or both are true, then this is true. So this is on and this is on, it's true. If either one of the two is on and the other one is off, then this is off or false. We have two pistons, one of them has a trigger and the trigger is going through this uh, block that's uh, attached to this other piston. So um, right now, since it's being triggered as soon as I start the game, this is true because this is being triggered. Uh, and if I press this, then now the trigger is down here and that's up there and vice versa. Um, the trigger is up here and the block is down here. So uh, only if both are true, either they're both up or they're both down, will this work. Here's a fun piece, a door lock. So if you know the combination, you can get through the door. Let's try, it's a three digit combination. So let's try two, four, and six. Nope, that doesn't work. Uh, maybe it's three, four, six. Nope, that doesn't work. Only if you get the three right does it work. So what is the combination? Let's go cheat and find out. So the three that are here on the bottom are the ones that work. It is two, five, six. This one is one, three, four. So let's see, two, five, six should work. So two, five, and six. There we go, it worked. So what happened? Um, all three pistons extended into this area right here. Um, if any of these other ones, one, three, or four, were triggered by a button, then these would extend up out of this trigger area. So you need the three correct ones on to get into the trigger area, and these three off um, to stay in the trigger area. So if you wanted to change your door combination, you would just come over here and say, okay, I want this to be instead of two, five, six, I want this to be four, and then you change the four to a five, and now your combination is two, four, six. Two, four, and six. There we go. So now this is a form of memory. We've got, we press the button, and this stays in place and it'll just stay in place. Pressing the button again doesn't do anything extra. Um, but when we hit reset, whoops, I gotta hold it. There we go. Uh, then it goes back to what it was before. And then I can hit this and it goes back up. So that's how memory works. So let's see how this works. So eight is triggering this piston, which pushes this into this area. This trigger is nine, which goes to this piston. And so, right, the button only pushes it up very briefly, but when it gets triggered, then this piston stays out. Um, and it's sort of a self-perpetuating uh, system. And this is also uh, using number nine to say, okay, it's in this trigger area, so let's stay up. Uh, and number 10, is a reset which is this hinge so if you hit reset then this hinge comes up 
uh, and then it's out of the trigger area and it goes back to this situation. Okay, so let's watch it a little more closely. Um, here, don't pay attention to me pressing this button. Pay attention to what's going on over there, right? There, and now hit the reset. Oh, I didn't hold it long enough. There we go. Uh, probably can come up with uh, something that would do the reset a little bit better. I could probably set this farther back, uh, but that would make it a bulkier mechanism. So, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out tank steering, uh, and I thought I had figured it out. Um, so I'm going to show you something, but don't get your hopes up, okay? <laughs> The, the problem with the tank steering, first off, we, we don't have the stacking motors anymore, but with tank steering, how do you get uh, the tire to rotate one way and then the other way? Uh, so the, the, ideally, you just have four wheels um, and they'd be able to use WASD combining logic, uh, but then you, how can you send a negative signal um, using a trigger? Uh, well what you could do is use a negative signal with some of these switches. So what I have here are four triggers all going to this motor plus two switches, three-way switches uh, set to negative going to this motor. Uh, so imagine that this is uh, WASD. This actually, even though it's going forward, it's actually uh, should be staying still just gets kind of a boost when it get, first gets started but there it's actually at a, a standing state because we've got these two negatives but they're being offset by these two positives so it results in a steady state uh, but if we remove any of these positives then we're going to get a negative and if we add positives we're going to get a positive result here so uh, this is, I believe, 41 removes, so we're going backwards, and if I do this, we're going backwards faster. If I put those back, we're at a standstill. If I add, now we're going forwards, and now we're going forwards faster. So, that's cool, except, here's the problem. Um, it's not going as fast, you can see, as just a motor would normally go. And the problem is, basically when I have six things going to the motor, uh, and two of them are re re reversed, um, I'm basically cutting the speed by a third. So this thing is going one third as fast as this thing. And that, you will see, is a problem. So here is my tank. I know it doesn't look like a tank, but it's got, uh, theoretically, it has tank steering. So I've added a, a wall here temporarily to keep it off the ground. Um, and so this is set to uh, W and S, and this is A and D, uh, two hinges. And so it'll go into this trigger area or this trigger area, depending on W or S. And then this is A and D trigger areas. So over here, this is representing tire, this tire, uh, this, these four hinges and trigger areas are representing this tire over here. Uh, these four are representing this tire over here. Uh, and these four are going to this tire over here. If I hit W, you can see that all four tires are going forwards. Now I'll hit S. You can see all four tires are going backwards. Now A, tires on this side are going forwards. This side they're going backwards. D, tires on this side are going forwards. And this side they're going backwards. And you can see what's happening with A and D. So, that all looks good, except you can see it's not going very fast, and that's a problem. I've removed the wall. Um, let me hit W very briefly. There's actually a couple of problems here. But let me hit A. 
So I'm hitting A, and it ain't moving. I'll hit D, it's still not moving. It's, it's kind of using, has some forward momentum. Let me hit S a couple of times to slow it down. Yeah, A and D, there's just not enough, not enough torque. There's just not enough torque to get it to turn. And there's another problem. If I get going any sort of speed on here, everything gets really glitchy. In fact, it, it either it's starting to trigger when it shouldn't be triggered, or worse, it gets stuck. I've let, I've let go of W, and you can see the things on this side are still stuck down in a down position. I'm trying to back up, but it's not backing up, and I'm going off the cliff now. So there's some kind of problem with the game. I'm thinking when you're moving forward, maybe the game is confused about what is in the trigger area. I don't know what the problem is, but um, it's a problem that I hope the uh, devs can fix. Uh, so that's problem number one. And problem number two, of course, is that these motors just don't have enough torque. And I can add larger motors and larger wheels but I get the same problem. It doesn't fix the problem by having larger motors and larger wheels. It's still slow and still can't turn with this mechanism. And, and we don't need larger motors because uh, that's just bulky. We need uh, motors that will go faster. And we need some way of having a trigger be able to send a negative signal. I don't know what that would be. Maybe there's um, a certain like one trigger block that could be created that would send some sort of negative signal to a motor. I don't know. I should say that um, you can do tank steering with stacking um, except that it, it it doesn't work quite the way you want it to. So I'm hitting W right now and I'm not going anywhere. I can sort of get it to work if I don't just tap one button. Don't just hit the W or don't just hit the A, but if I hit W with A intermittently or A with W intermittently, then I can get it to work, uh, which is odd and of course it's difficult to steer that way. This works okay. And of course I showed you uh, the tank steering with six wheels that worked pretty well but I'd still like to get a, a solution uh, for four wheels. So I think I'm done with this world. I'm gonna upload this to the workshop. I'll call it uh, Logic Examples uh, and I'll leave a link. I think I can leave a link in the YouTube description. I'm not sure if I can leave a link or not. We'll see. Uh, it's the first time I've ever uploaded a world. So that's going to do it for this episode today. If you've liked what you've seen, please give me a like. Consider subscribing to my channel. Go check out my Discord. You could also find me on Twitter. I'll leave links to those in the description. Thank you to everybody on the GameCraft team for uh, responding to our questions and comments uh, on Discord especially. And thanks to all the other uh, players on Discord who are posting awesome content uh, and suggestions. And thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.